Hey, I got some idea here. I got a new idea. Yeah, I'm out here, you know, still. It's just a little after midnight. We'll do the midnight in the garden of chokes and strawberries. Like the, what? what is that, that book, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, something like that. I've never read the book. But uh, I can't figure out a funny pun to make with that either. But uh, let's do this. Let's look at this. Let's have a little midnight deal. Right here, you're looking at some of those bull's blood beets that I planted. And they're coming up. And if, if the storm doesn't wash them out, I don't think it will in this bed. This bed's got a lot of protection. Look at them down in there. See them? They're coming up. Remember, I'm trying to take advantage of uh, my sun chokes here. All these sun chokes. That's the light. We don't even need the flashlight. Um, the sun chokes offering these bull's blood beets. It's an heirloom. Giving them some shade. Giving them the, the offering of... Uh, uh, a microclimate that maybe they, they can they can live in and not bolt so fast. Uh, bolting happens. A lot of people don't know this. I certainly didn't. And there's the one sun choke that's coming up there. It would be good if I could point at it right. And there's the other sun choke that's coming up right here. That's the sun choke. Those were two of them that I was worried about. Um, but anyhow, bolting, um, uh, bolting, if I remember it right, that is something that a plant does based on, <laughs> based on soil temperature, not so much air temperature, it's soil temperature. Yeah, so when the ground heats up, that's what triggers the bolting, if I remember that right. Somebody, if I'm 100% wrong, you just tell me, you know. But I think I remember that right. Now, this back here, this, and there's a strawberry I threw out. That'll make another plant right there. Um, yeah, I see. See, right here in the line. I've got some of my spinach coming up. I think, didn't, didn't we? Oh, man. Oh, I'm losing battery. I'm losing battery. So, I'm, I'm going to have to turn the flashlight on now. Yeah. Look at there, though. That, that spinach right there. That spinach is coming up in a line here. Y'all can't see very well. I apologize. This is the first, this is the first midnight garden update I've ever done. So I don't know how to do one. You can see them. You can see them. See them down that line right there. That's my spinach, and it's coming up deeper in the shade in between these sun chokes, taking advantage of that microclimate. Um, I'm hoping that they'll work out good. Let me show you this. Now, when you plant your sun chokes, what's going to happen is uh, they're going to set up. They're going to set up runners to the sides. They're going to shoot out from underneath the ground, you know, just a little bit away. Very soon, this patch of sun chokes is going to choke out every bit of sun hitting the ground. Now, strawberries tolerate a lot of shade. I'm very proud of this one here. When I put that one out, it wasn't that big. Look at it now. I think that was one of the scrawnier ones. I don't know, but look at them all. Yeah, midnight in the sun choke garden. I'm back over here in the sun chokes, but at least it's a different kind of thing. Yeah, there's one. There's uh, there's one of the side shoots that came out. I didn't have one planted there. That's a side shoot that came off of one of these. You'll see, you'll see like this one here. It's got two. Those sun chokes are crazy. They are crazy. Comfrey's looking good. Hostas, you know, 
all that. Now see what we saw over there in the container earlier. These these peas, these peas here. They uh they got uncovered. Can you see it? Can you see those over there? They got uncovered too. And I learned something from my friend up in Cape Cod. The video that he just dropped. Oh look, 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 watch me wiggle it. Watch. See it? It's got it's got the little root going down in there. It's wanting to live. Yep. I'm gonna try to cover these up just a little bit. I don't know about y'all, but this is fun. I love this, and I hope, well, I don't know if I'll be successful in covering it up. Rain's going to just come in here and wash all that back off of it again. Maybe I better not mess with it too much. I don't know. But um, I thought I saw something. Yeah, here it is. Here it is right here. One of the last sticks. One of the last sticks. There's a sun choke right there. So, given given a few more days and all of these should be up, and I'll only have one, one that didn't make it if, if it doesn't come up. Onions looking looking okay. Everything needs rain. My one bean over there. <laughs> My one single bean. The Scott Head Single Seed Challenge bean. Oh, it's sitting right there. Yep. And it's looking good. And we don't have to worry about the frost. Those frosts are all done. Now we just got to worry about the heat that's building here in the south. Yeah. The Scott Head Single Seed Challenge Rattlesnake Bean. It's going to be climbing up that tree, right up here up my, my pear tree. Oh, me. I love all these challenges, and I love being around such good people on YouTube. It's hard to meet gardeners that aren't great people. Uh, a lot of people helping each other. And that's the comfrey. The comfrey that was uh, had so many ants in one of the pots. From a few episodes back, it's struggling, but it's recovering. Comfrey's a strong plant, and uh, you can see, see we got, uh, let me just get over there. We got fresh new leaves, it looks like. Fresh new leaves. Yeah, look at it. I was worried about them, because the leaves all look like that. It's done spraying up those. So that comfrey's taken off. It's gonna reach down deep in the soil. It's gonna bring up nutrients to the top with the leaves. I'm gonna chop and drop. I'm gonna do all kinds of stuff with that comfrey. Oh, me. Yep, let's see what else. <coughs> I don't wanna show you this one thing. My, 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 my poor little area here that I'm trying to work on. I hadn't worked on it in a while. Uh, it's just so much going on, and I've got a lot to dig, and I've got a lot of wood to put in there. One mullein. That mullein is so pretty. So pretty. Secret garden. And uh, my red mulberry tree that I planted over here. It's going to do fine with all that wood that's underneath the uh, underneath the ground there. Let's just see. Let's see about the ants. Let's see about these ants. What we got here? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, there. I got some ideas for this now. I've got me a little invention for these ants. You know, sometimes you just can't go forward the way you want to. And just leave stuff setting. They're enjoying it in here. Uh, <laughs> I got them a, a high rise. But I'm going to fix them. I'm going to fix them very soon. Just leave them sitting in there. Got me a nice little ant hive there. Uh, I bought a bought what supposedly was going to be a good flashlight. 
and it just ain't working out too good. You know what? Based on all the talking I've already done, this is going on a 15 minute video. So you know what? It is technically the next day. And uh, I may let this stand. Yeah, I'll give y'all a little midnight tour. Midnight tour of the things I got going on right before this storm. Uh, hopefully the storms don't get too bad. I think I'll count this for tomorrow. Maybe I'll give me a chance to get a little ahead. I won't have to scramble so much tomorrow. Maybe get some rest. Yeah. Last night making that video helped me a lot. Today's easier. It's going to give me a chance to actually uh, have that second steak. Yeah. And a fine baked potato loaded with butter. <laughs> Black pepper and red pepper and a little salt and Worcestershire sauce. Yeah, it's going to let me enjoy this new knife that I bought. There's a friend of mine that lives here, and he's uh, a knife maker. This is made out of antler and a um, an old saw blade. Yeah, I'm going to have him make me another one, but I'm going to have him make me a fork. As you can see, i got a plastic fork right there. I've got some more stuff in storage, but I don't have it out. I'm going to get him to make me a plastic fork and a knife. I mean, a plastic fork, a new uh, a new fork and a knife set to go. This is a skinning blade. Uh, I don't have anything to skin, but I do want to use this. I'm going to use this to cut my steak today. Yeah, I love things of quality, especially if they're handmade. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, love, I love my steak. Uh, but I'm certainly not going to mention today, I've done enough of this, I'm, I'm not going to mention that um, second helping cooking uh, <laughs> does some good things, some amazing cooking, and has made me hungry today with a pork loin. I believe that's what it was, and so now I get some charred mammal flesh myself. Yeah, second helping, you're doing some good things out there. I love watching you. Um, I'm also not going to mention Boon Chow. I wouldn't do that. I've mentioned her before and the awesome, awesome pizza that she made that is very keto friendly. Uh, this is not exactly keto friendly with a potato, but it's going to be friendly to my stomach. So yeah, it's a good day. Uh, got one more thing to do today. I'll see you there. These little trees, they're not swaying much. Coming up here out of my old pine stump, or one of them. Little babies coming up. They're not swaying much in the breeze. But my other trees are. There's a bad storm. Bad storm rising here. And that reminds me of... Uh, probably the first album I should have said and that was a Green River by Credence Clearwater Revival bad moon rising got a bad storm rising now um, that's probably the first album yeah that was played on eight tracks in my parents cars played on the radio yep Credence, Credence Clearwater Revival I miss them there's a group that didn't last long enough. Look, right here in my greenhouse. Yeah, big boy. One of my guards in my messy, messy greenhouse. All right. One thing I've got to do is uh, I've got to plant every day. But today, I'm going to show you another little idea. This is one of my uh, sweet potatoes. I don't like that spot on there. You see that? I'm going to leave it. Um, but it's already got some sprouts coming off. And I'm sure that, that most of y'all have seen, uh, seen this. Uh, using a bottle to sprout your uh, sweet potatoes. These bottles are incredible. They don't go away. 
once you use them, I mean, once they're made, that plastic stays there for years. This almost qualifies as a one of these little arts and crafts things that you see for the garden, um, just like the uh, strawberries. Almost qualifies like that, little ideas. But it's a uh, it's really a time honored way of starting sweet potato slips. So I'm doing this to get those ready to plant. Well, I thought I was going to do better with job with my knife. I'm trying to do this fast so the video isn't that long. So I've got to get that started though. That's a special sweet potato. Uh, kind of rare. That was given to me by my friend Eileen. Alright. But I want to show you just how fast it is to do something. Boom. Add a little water. This may be the shortest gardening video I've made. And boom. Right there. Just like that. That right there should let that keep going and uh, make some good sprouts on there. And then I'll take the sprouts off and plant those. Sweet potatoes are very, very easy to grow and propagate. They are incredibly um, uh, strong plant with so many benefits. You can eat the greens. You can, of course, eat the tubers. You can bring these in uh, to your house. Uh, and let them overwinter. I've got many in there that are Stokes sweet potatoes. The uh, purple variety. Purple outside and inside. Uh, but these are a little more special here. I've got a few different varieties that I'm going to get started. But it's from tubers. Okay. So uh, that's the last thing that I had to do. I planted every day with this. Eh, in a way. We're getting, we're getting plants ready to go. If I don't do that, I won't be able to plant them. So, uh, I guess I'll see you. So, tonight, just after midnight in the in my garden here on the Midnight Patrol, I'm going to bid you farewell from Homestead Aquarius and uh, hope to see you back tomorrow and the next day. And I'll post a link to my group on Facebook. If you want to, uh, if you want to learn, learn more, meet more people, um, there's some neat people already in the group. Uh, I've got some YouTube, uh, YouTubers, other YouTubers that are in the group. Um, the reason I wanted to, to make that group is to help people find each other, help people learn. Um, if you're a YouTuber and you know, if you're subscribed to me, um, come over and join me, follow that link. And what I'd like for you to do, what I'd love for you to do is to share your channel. That group is for my supporters, my viewers and fellow YouTubers, uh, my friends. And it's a place for y'all to show who you are, show your channel, share your pictures of your gardens, anything that we're doing, discuss things. Um, if you, if you've got a YouTube channel and you want to show it off, please join me Homestead Aquarius Network on Facebook. Uh, there'll be a link in the description or the first pin comment. Um, but, uh, join me over there and share your channel. Uh, I share many people's channel there on my own. Um, but I have other YouTubers that will drop their videos in, introduce themselves and uh, we can find each other. And I'll tell you, I've seen a lot of, a lot of good things happen. Uh, people get known a little bit faster. Um, it's just something that I offer uh, for everyone, especially if you're doing something good. Um, so anyhow, uh, I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, and I hope everybody is doing good uh, with the storms of their lives. Everybody hang on and Help one another out. And I'll see you.